Yeah, of course. Because that's why we are here and we found a massive uh, uh, tunnels and uh, from here. Northern Gaza and the outgoing gunfire from the Israel Defense Forces never stops. Heavy machine guns, tanks and mortars aimed at Hamas strongholds. Yeah, it's a, it's a... Then a shouted warning and a commanding officer quickly ushers us yeah, to cover. Let's go to there. Okay. Because, uh... We've been standing in the same place too long and here that's never a good idea. This is Israel's war on Hamas up close. I'm in Al-Hanoum in northern Gaza, about a mile from the Israeli border. There's very little left of this town now, and what is left is being raised to the ground by bulldozers. From here and other places, the Hamas fanatics emerged on October the 7th, broke through to Israel and began their killing spree. More than 1,400 people died and 242 were taken hostage. Now, a month after the war began, Beit Hanun is just an urban wasteland of damaged buildings, concrete and twisted steel. The males joined a media embed with the IDF, who are keen to show us how Hamas ruthlessly exploited the civilians, their homes and their schools for terror. Human shields for their rocket attacks on Israel and cover for their network of tunnels said to stretch 300 miles under Gaza. But the first thing you notice here is the complete devastation. There's not a building that's escaped the bombing, which came from land and sea, but mostly from the air. It's a wasteland, and even the buildings still standing are mostly concrete skeletons with gaping holes where walls used to be. We are in uh, North Gaza. You see, it's a civilian city. You want to wish that uh, it's a normal city, but uh, in every two or three house, we see the bombs, we see the uh, entrance of tunnels. It's not a, a little organization, a terror organization that uh, it's a massive, it's a massive of, uh, we have here rockets and uh, arms and uh, I, I tell you the tunnel, the, it's, it's everywhere. It's impossible to imagine anyone coming back to live here for a long time, yet only weeks ago, these buildings were full of families. The reminders are everywhere, clothes lying strewn on the ground, a child's colouring book in the dust, everyday items from each house left in the rush to escape. What happened to the community here? Did they flee south before the bombs came? You can only hope so. The Israelis say they warned the people of northern Gaza what was to come with millions of leaflets, text messages and phone calls. They were told to leave because their cities would become a battleground. That is an understatement, if anything. More than 10,000 people, nearly half of them children, have been killed in Israel's operation, says Gaza's health ministry run by Hamas. And around a million and a half Palestinians have been displaced, leading to a massive humanitarian crisis in southern Gaza. The UN says the Strip has become a children's graveyard. These men from the Negev Brigade are all reservists, teachers, dentists, students and mortgage brokers. Citizens at war taking the fight to Hamas. I'm a mortgage consultant. Yet still, the moment that they called me, I came. But we will stay here as long as it takes until we know that our families are safe. Our families and all of our neighbors. In Israel, everybody knows everybody. There's always one connection apart from each other. So we all feel brothers and sisters. They found tunnels here, plenty of them, under houses, schools and mosques. We're shown one which ran for miles. The entrance is right next to a kindergarten. The Israelis have blown up the tunnel further along its length, but show us how well built the entrance was. It's got running water and electricity, something most civilians who fled south are now having to do without. We found 17 in a, entrances. In this small village. As you can see, it's a, it's a tunnel that in the middle of the civilian city. Do you know how far this tunnel extended? How, how far it went? Very, very long. So this pipe is connected to the water supply, so they can uh, stay there. Uh, for a long time, with water, with food, with electricity. Very, very well uh, built. 
they are uh, fighting like that, like rats. We go and look into hospitals and we see that there's so many tunnels under it, so much ammunition that's under it at the moment. And we go house by house to check each one of them and see what the situation is. And sadly, there's tunnels after tunnels after tunnels full of ammunition, full of uh, um, papers explaining how to uh, attack Israel, how to come and slaughter Israeli citizens. Everything here we see every day in the tunnels. Every couple of hours we get uh, indication of more tunnels that are coming this way under uh, every part of Gaza, at least in our area at the moment. We try and move around what used to be streets, clambering over small mountains of rubble. Our IDF escorts keep us moving, anxious to be back under hard cover at their base. All the time, the huge armoured bulldozers are at work. They're nicknamed teddy bears. They're used to flatten the homes of suspected terrorists in the West Bank. They push the debris to one side or the other, making a passage for their vehicles. It's a ghostly landscape with danger lurking all around. Many of these houses have been booby-trapped. But the same urban battleground will confront the Israelis as they take on Hamas in its stronghold of Gaza City. As we leave Beit Hanun, the colonel tells us he hopes Gaza can return to peaceful coexistence with Israel, trading as neighbors as they used to do 30 years ago. That all seems a very long way off for now.